prendre les structures avec deux pronoms, and especially when one of them, so one of the pronouns, when you, you will use two pronouns, and one of them will be en, okay, so it was introduced in a previous uh, video lesson, okay, so we'll work on this lesson, in this lesson on the pronoun en, okay, and then next lesson will be with le, la, le, the lesson after lui, leur, and the last lesson regarding this topic with two pronouns will be with the pronoun i, okay, so let's see now with en. So, me, or them, m apostrophe, te, the apostrophe, or then lui, se, or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur, and se, or s apostrophe, will be placed before en. Okay, so that's the rule. En will come after me, or m apostrophe, te, or t apostrophe, lui, se, or s apostrophe, nous, vous, leur, or se, or s apostrophe. Okay, so that's the way it will go. So, en is coming after. Okay, so we'll see a few examples, and then I thought it might be useful to put, well, the examples at the present form, so le présent, and then passé composé, because if you remember correctly, this uh, passé composé is uh, what we call a composed tense, and then the futur proche, so this near future structure that we've got, and uh, normally you, you make it with the verb aller, and then your verb at the infinitive, and it's quite interesting because in that case, well, it gives you two verbs, okay, so the question is how do you put your pronouns when you've got two verbs in your sentence, okay? So let's see now the present. Mon ami me donne un conseil. All right, so mon ami, my friend, me donne, donne is to give, un conseil, an advice, okay? So let's say that we would like to replace un conseil in that case, and then we saw in the previous lesson that un conseil could be replaced with en, okay? And so, mon ami me, so it should be before, if you remember what we saw previously, so me should be in the first position, and then en should come right after, and then the verb, all right? But then if you remember, we've got this e uh, here, so me, and then en is starting with the vowel as well, so e uh, should go away, that's the reason why you will have this m apostrophe, so m'en donne un, all right? Second example, ta femme t'achète une montre. Ta femme, your wife, achète is to, to buy une montre, a watch. Okay? And then, of course, we would like to replace une montre in that case. We will use this en pronoun. Okay? And you get ta femme. So you've got this te again, but then as it's with the vowel here, en, then e uh, needs to go away. Ton achète une. All right? So as we saw for the rule, First we've got te, after that en is coming, and then we've got the verb, okay? Then, il nous apporte des fruits, okay? So remember, apporter is to bring des fruits, fruits, okay? In that case, we would like to replace des fruits, and so we will replace it with the pronoun en, okay? Il nous en apporte, all right? So, nous first, then your pronoun en, then the verb, okay? So let's see now with the passé composé, so same sentence, mon ami m'a donné un conseil, all right, mon ami m'en a donné un. So it will be exactly the same thing, especially if you think that a donné, the thing that you see here, okay, it's only one verb, okay, so you've got two parts because it's composed, all right, so first you've got avoir and then you've got this participe, passé form, okay, but it's only one verb, all right, that's the reason why you put first your pronoun here, me, and then you put this second pronoun en before avoir, okay, because this is the verb here, so you get mon ami m'en a donné un, let's see now the same sentence that we had previously but at the passé composé form, Ta femme t'a acheté une montre. Okay, so same thing here. Ta femme, so te should be here, but then, of course, with the vowel, you, we take away the e. En a acheté une. Ta femme t'en a acheté une.
All right. And then, ils nous ont apporté des fruits. All right. Same thing. Ils nous en ont apporté. All right. So, nous first, then en. And after that, you put your verb. So, same rule here. It's composed. So, you've got two parts. But still, it's only one verb here. So, let's read it. Il nous en, okay, beautiful liaison here, <laughs> ont apporté, okay, so the full thing goes like, ils nous en ont apporté, all right, so let's read it one more time, mon ami m'en a donné un, ta femme t'en a acheté une, ils nous en ont apporté, all right, and then the last example we'll see with the future proche. So in that case, it will be quite interesting because we will have two verbs. Okay, so let's see. Mon ami va me donner un conseil. Okay, so exactly the same idea. We'll replace un conseil by en, and then we see how it goes. Mon ami va. All right, so here you've got this verb aller. All right, so the first verb here. And then you will put your pronouns. So, me here, of course, e is going away. Then you've got your pronoun en before the second verb. Okay, donner to give. That's the second verb here. Infinitive form, as usual in French, when we've got two verbs. So, mon ami va m'en donner un. All right. Ta femme va t'acheter une monstre. Exactly the same rule. Ta femme va. So you've got first your verb here, then te, but then e is going away. En, and the second verb, acheter une. All right. Ils vont nous apporter des fruits. Ils vont nous en apporter. Okay. So that's the only thing that you should remember. So when you've got one verb, whether it's simple or composed, then it is before the verb. When you've got two verbs like here, so with these first aller, then your verb, so donner here, remember that your pronouns will come before the second verb. Okay? But then the order will stay the same. Les structures avec deux pronoms. And uh, if we are more precise, uh, if you've got one of these two pronouns, if it is le, la, or les. Okay? So, we saw in the previous video the same concept. So, when you've got two pronouns in the same sentence, but then one of them is en. Okay? So, if you want to check it, then it is the previous uh, video. And then after that, we'll see lui, leur, and we we'll finally will work with Y. Okay? But then in that video, will work on le, la, ou les, okay? And then the rule is quite simple. If you've got first, me, te, nous, vous, they will come first, and after that you will put le, la, and les, okay? That's the rule. If you've got le, la, and then les, it will come all the time after me, te, nous, and vous, okay? Let's see that more precisely and so we'll work on présent passé composé because it's a composed tense so it's quite interesting to see how you put this pronounce when you've got a composed tense and then the future proche so this near future so I am going to like in in English so aller plus infinitif okay it's interesting because in that case you've got two verbs so we'll see how you put your pronouns when you've got the structure the sentence with two verbs. Okay, so let's start now with the présent. So, mon père me conseille ce livre. Mon père, my father, conseille to uh, advise or to recommend, in that case, ce livre, this book. So, we want to replace ce livre. We will put le. Okay, and as we saw for the rule, so mon père, first me, then le, and after that, the word, uh, the verb, sorry. Mon père me le conseille. Okay, that's it. Quite simple, remember. Me first, then le, and then the verb. Second example. Tes amis, your friends, donner is to give, les clés, the keys. Okay. Tes amis nous donnent les clés. 
So we want to replace les clés, so we should replace it with the plural form, so it's les, okay, here, les, and then remember, first nous, then les, and after that the verb. Tes amis nous les donnent, okay? And the final example, je me réserve, okay, so réserve to reserve, la place de parking, so the parking place, la place de parking, in that case, we don't want to use la place de parking, we want to replace it with a pronoun, so je me la réserve, okay, remember, first me, then la, and after that your verb. Okay, so it's quite simple, it's not really difficult, remember, uh, in that case, me, nous, me, here in the first place, then le, la for the feminine, les for the plural, second place, then the verb. Let's see how it will go with the passé composé form. So passé composé, as you can see it in its name, it's a composed tense, okay, so you've got two parts, first you've got avoir, then you've got here participe passé. Okay, so, mon père m'a conseillé ce livre. Same thing, we don't want to use ce livre again, so we put the pronoun. Okay, so in that case, if you look carefully, then mon père me first place, then you should have le here, because it's the masculine form, but then you've got here a vowel after, so e uh, needs to go away, so you get l apostrophe. Mon père me l'a conseillé. All right? Then, tes amis nous ont donné les clés. So, exactly the same sentence that we had previously at the present form, but in that case, it's the passé composé form, okay? Tes amis nous les ont donné. Okay? So, same rule. First, nous, then les, before, and then after that, you put the verb here. So, you can see that I've been putting in red the ending here, just to... Uh, remind you or uh, yeah, let you remember that we've got a rule in French normally when we make this passé composé form with avoir like that and if you've got what we call complément d'objet direct before you should put at the end of your participe passé form here feminine if the word is feminine so a s if the word is plural, okay, in that case we've got les clés, les clés is feminine plural, so that's the reason why we will add first feminine and then plural here, okay, so the good news is that you don't pronounce it, so donner, okay, so whether it would be without this final es or with es, you will pronounce it the same way, tes amis nous les ont donné, okay, and then the last one, je me suis réservé la place de parking, je me first, then la, and after that suis réservé. Okay, so it doesn't really change that much if you think, first me, or then nous, as we saw, then le, or then la and les, and after that you put your verb, even if in that case, it's a composed verb. It doesn't change anything. You just put it before. Okay? So let's see now how it will work with future proche, so structure with two verbs. So, same example. Mon père va me conseiller ce livre. And now you can see something interesting. You can see that me and le will be placed before the second verb. Okay? So, mon père va, so you put first your verb, me le conseiller. Alright? So, keep in mind that me and le should be before the second verb. Tes amis vont nous donner les clés. Tes amis vont nous les donner. Je vais me réserver la place de parking. Je vais me la réserver. Alright, so the rule goes like that, me, nous, me, so as here we saw first place, then le, la, les, second place, alright, and after that, your second verb. Le présent continue. So le présent continue, it's an interesting structure because 
it's uh, the kind of structure that you can use if you want to insist on the fact that an action or something, a process is continuing at the time when you are uh, speaking or talking. Okay, And the way to construct this is to use first this expression être en train de, so you can see that here we've got the verb être, to be, okay, and this structure should be obviously at the present time, okay, and the, no, not the present time, sorry, but the present tense, all right, so you should conjugate your verb être here at the present, okay, then you will put the verb that you want to use in your structure, this verb should be at the infinitive form, so the basic form of the verb, okay, so, and it will give you this présent continu. Okay, so let's see a few examples. First, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Okay, faire is to do, and then mes devoirs, my homework. All right, and then when you, when you use this je suis en train de, okay, so you want to insist on the fact that at the time when you are talking, the, the, the process is taking place, okay, and it, it continues, and that's the whole concept of it. So, je suis en train de faire mes devoirs, all right? Second example that we've got, so same thing here, tu es en train de regarder un film, okay? So, same thing, regarder or to watch a film, a movie. So, the action is taking place, and of course, it continues if you use this en train de, okay? But then remember that you've got to put here the verb être at the present form for tu, tu es, okay? So you need to conjugate it. And then, elle est en train de réparer, so to repair, son vélo, her bike. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo, all right? So same thing, it's continuing, it's taking place at the time when you are talking. And the last one, Il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Préparer, to prepare, le petit déjeuner, breakfast. Ok? So, il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Ok? So, at the time when you are talking, he's doing it right now, and the process is continuing. Ok? So, let's read them one more time. Je suis en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu es en train de regarder un film. Elle est en train de réparer son vélo. Il est en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so that's what we call le présent continu. But then if you think about that, well, it would be possible to transpose that at the past as well. Why not? So, let's call it le passé continu. And it's possible because, well, the idea is that you just use the same, same structure, être en train de... Okay, but think about that because we've been covering the past tenses already and it would be a bit strange to use this passé composé tense because normally we tend to use this passé composé when we want to express actions, okay? But then in that case, imparfait would be more appropriate, okay? So if you want to use this passé continu concept, then use être en train de and you use this Imparfait, okay, then same idea, you put your verb at the infinitive form and you will get this, passé continu, okay, so you know what, we'll take exactly the same sentences that we had uh, as examples for the, the present, but we just put them at the passé, and here we go, j'étais en train de faire mes devoirs, so as you can see, the only thing that will change in this structure is être, Okay, because in that case, you should put it at the imparfait form. J'étais en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu étais en train de regarder un film. Elle était en train de réparer son vélo. Il était en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. All right, so the only thing that will change here, here, and here, it's the verb être that you should put at the imparfait form. All right? And in the same logic, we could put this structure at the future as well. Why not? So, le futur continue. And in that case, exactly the same structure. So, être en train de, but then obviously, so être should be 
at the future form, okay, so the real one, and then the infinitive form just to get this future continue. Okay, same example, same sentences, so je serai en train de faire mes devoirs. Tu seras en train de regarder un film Elle sera en train de réparer son vélo. Il sera en train de préparer le petit déjeuner. Okay, so as you can see, the only thing that will change here is the verb être. So it should be at the future, future simple form, so the real future. Okay, here, here and here. Okay, le passé récent like the recent past, if you want to translate it directly. So, le passé récent is a, like a false or a fake tense that we've got, because technically it's the present tense, but then if you want to express something that you just did, okay? So, we've got a tense for that, and it's quite useful and quite easy to make, because the concept is that first you will use the verb venir, and the preposition de, okay, so venir is to come, venir de, so this should be at the present tense, and then you will put your verb at the infinitive form, okay, and you will get what we call le passé récent. Okay, so it's a technique just to express something yet that you just did, Okay, uh, so it's not possible to use this passé récent, of course, for last week or uh, uh, the month before, it's not possible. Okay, so it's really something that is somehow connected to the present. So, present, something that you just did. Okay, so of course, if you want to make it, you should know the conjugation of venir by heart. If that's not the case, then don't worry, here it comes. So, at the present tense, it's je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient, nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. All right, so let's see that one more time. Je viens. Final S not pronounced, okay? And when you combine this EON, you get this YEN, YEN. Je viens, all right? Tu viens, well, exactly the same thing. Final S not pronounced, and then you get this YEN sound, all right? Then IL vient, exactly the same sound, because final T here is not pronounced. Elle vient, all right? Nous venons, okay? So final S not pronounced, and then remember that you pronounce this E, uh, like a the, venons, okay, O-N in your nose, on, venons, nous venons, all right, vous venez, okay, so a Z at the end combined will give you the sound A, and here you get a, venez, vous venez, all right, and then il vient, so remember as usual in French when we talk about conjugation, a and T at the end, you don't pronounce it here. And then you've got this A uh here, followed by this double N. So double consonant here, so when they are identical, they will open the sound of this A. Uh. So you will get it, and it will be produced like A, okay? So vien, vien, okay? Don't insist on this N, no, vien. Vienne, okay? Ils viennent, elles viennent. All right? So remember, je viens, tu viens, il vient, elle vient. Nous venons, vous venez, ils viennent, elles viennent. So this is the first part that you should use to make this passé récent. Okay? And remember, after that, you put this preposition de plus your verb at the infinitive. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay, discuter, to discuss, avec, with, my sister, ma sœur. Je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Okay, something that just happened. All right, and then same thing here. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Un, uh, sorry, boire, to drink, un verre glace. 
de lait of milk. D'accord Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Same thing here, it just happened. Elle vient de gagner le match. Gagner is to win, le match, obviously, the match. Elle vient de gagner le match. And the last one, nous venons de déjeuner. Ok Déjeuner here. When you have your lunch, ok Nous venons de déjeuner. All right. So, je viens de discuter avec ma sœur. Tu viens de boire un verre de lait. Elle vient de gagner le match. Nous venons de déjeuner. All right. So, keep in mind, venir, at the present form, as we see here, and then the preposition, la préposition de, and your verb at the infinitive form. And then you get this passé récent, something that you just did. Ok Le futur proche. So if you want to translate this futur proche directly, it would be like the near future. So technically, it is uh, one way that we've got to express the future, but then we keep a structure that is conjugated at the present tense, okay? And so, to make it, we'll see it right now, first we need to use the verb aller. Aller is to go, okay? And, well, this verb aller should be at the present tense. Then, you will put your verb. Your verb should be at the infinitive, so the basic form of the verb. Then you will get this future proche structure. Okay, so it is like, like in English, for instance, when you say, I am going to something, that exactly, it is exactly the same structure, okay, express something that you want to do or you are going to do, okay, but still, it will be at the present tense. Okay, so the, the only thing that really you should remember and know by heart is the verb aller at the present tense. If you don't remember it, well, don't worry, it is coming right now. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Ok, so this is the verb aller at the present tense. Ok, let's see it one more time. Je vais... Final S not pronounced here, and remember, when you combine this A and E together, you get the sound E, so really open. Je vais. Tu vas. Final S not pronounced. Tu vas. Il va. Elle va. Nous allons. Remember, final S not pronounced. O and together, it's on. And then we'll make this little link between the two. What we call the liaison, nous allons. Okay? Then, vous allez. Remember, a Z at the end here will give you this A sound. Okay? Allez. And then, as previously, this little link between the two liaisons, vous allez. Right? Then, ils vont. Final T, not pronounced. And then, O and together, on vont. Okay? Ils vont, elles vont. All right, so one more time. Je vais, tu vas, il va, elle va, nous allons, vous allez, ils vont, elles vont. Okay, so that's the only thing that really you should modify or conjugate because after that, you will put your verb at the infinitive form. So let's see a few examples now. And the first one. Je vais sortir ce soir. Sortir is to go out. Ce soir, this evening, okay? So, I am going to go out, sounds strange in English, this evening, okay? In French, well, it's, well, quite possible here. Je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Apporter is to bring un gâteau, a cake. Elle va apporter un gâteau, okay? And after that... Nous allons faire du café. Faire is to do, or in that case it could be to prepare. Du café, some coffee. Nous allons faire du café. Okay. Vous allez partir en vacances. Partir is to go en vacances, on vacation. And here you can see that at the end, 
we've got this point d'interrogation, so it means that it's a question, and if it's a question, we should raise the voice a little bit at the end. So let's repeat it. Vous allez partir en vacances? Okay, so I tend to insist a little bit, but still, that's the idea. You should raise your voice a little bit at the end just to inform the person that it's a question, okay? Vous allez partir en vacances? Vous allez partir en vacances? Okay, so you can hear it. First, je vais sortir ce soir. Then, elle va apporter un gâteau. Nous allons faire du café. Vous allez partir en vacances? Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 9, Leçon D. And in this lesson we'll discover together what we call in French le futur antérieur. So le futur antérieur is a tense, okay? So I thought it might be useful to introduce it right now because we've been covering quite many tenses so far and this one is quite useful. So the whole I mean, the way we will construct this uh, video is uh, first we'll see uh, l'utilisation, so when do we use this uh, futur antérieur, and then the second part will be la formation, so how do we construct, how do we build this, uh, this tense, okay? So the first part will be l'utilisation, when do we use it, and so the main or Well, the only concept uh, of this uh, futur antérieur is that, that it will be used to express what we call le passé dans le futur. So, the past in the future. So, I know it might sound a bit strange, but still, it does exist in other languages, for instance, English. So, you will see that if you compare it to English, it's almost the same thing and the same construction. Okay, so let's first see. So, if... We are here, okay, this is the timeline. So if we are here, normally if we want to express what is happening right now, we will use the present tense, so le présent here, okay? And then if we want to talk about the future, then we'll use this futur simple, for instance, so the tense we've been seeing uh, previously, okay? And if we want to talk about what happened before, so it's still, if you look carefully, it's still the future for us because we are here, it's the, it's the present right now, so it's still the future, but you want to really go that way, first the future, then the past, so in a way, it's the past in the future, all right, so if it's not clear so far, let's see one example, at the future form, so if we want to use this faire, faire is to do, je ferai mes devoirs, mes devoirs, my homework, okay, so this is the sentence at the future form, je ferai mes devoirs, okay, and if we've got the same sentence, but at the future antérieur, so it will be like, j'aurai fait mes devoirs, okay, so If we, you want to translate it directly, see, I will do my homework, and then here, I will have done my homework. So if you feel the difference in English between the two sentences, well, it's exactly the same thing in French, okay? So strangely, if you say, je ferai mes devoirs here, it's the future, okay? But then if you use the same structure at this future antérieur, I will have done my homework, then you've got the feeling that, of course, it's the future, but in a way it's done already, okay? So it's more certain with this sentence. And it, it's exactly the same use that we will have in French as uh, it is used in, um, in English, okay? So now, second part, formation. So let's have a look now. First sentence, so it's the, the real future. Je mangerai au restaurant. Okay, and then here we've got j'aurai mangé au restaurant. So this second part is the future antérieur. So if we take the, the time to look a little bit here, we can see that we've got first avoir, okay, at the future. And here we've got this participe passé form that we saw previously, okay. Second example, if we take the sentence, tu regarderas, regardez, is to watch, la télévision, okay, tu auras regardé la télévision. So this is the same structure at the future antérieur. What can we see? We can see avoir one more time, and it's at the future tense, 
and then here we can see that we've got the participe passé form okay so third example il ira ira so it's coming from aller okay aller is to go au travail at work and then here il sera allé au travail so we can see that here we've got être and then we've got the participe passé form here okay so what can we deduct here we've got avoir participe passé avoir participe passé être participe passé so the rule is like that in most of the cases if you want to construct this future anterior form first you will have for most of the verbs avoir and it should be at the future form and then the participe passé form and you will get your future anterior in some cases, you will have to use être at the future form, so le futur. Then your participe passé form, and you will get the, the future anterior form. All right? So if you saw the previous videos that we've been doing for other composed tenses in French, like passé composé, plus que parfait, etc., well, it is exactly the same way to construct it. It's the only difference is here. Okay, so if you use avoir for one verb at the passé composé form, for instance, you will use avoir as well at the future anterior. The only thing that will change is that for this future anterior form, it will be here, the future. Okay, and if you use être for some verbs or one verb at the passé composé, it will be exactly the same thing, but keep in mind that here it should be at the future form. Okay, so remember that for être, we've got aller, aller is to go, arriver, arriver to arrive, descendre, to go down, devenir, to become, entrer, to enter, to come in, monter, to go up, mourir, to die, naître, born, Partir, to leave, rester, to stay, retourner, to return, sortir, to go out, tomber, to fall, and then venir, to come. Okay, so keep in mind that all these verbs will require être. Okay? And then when we talk about être, of course, as usual in French, for these composed tenses, all the reflexive verbs like se something, okay? So, se regarder, for instance, or then s'appeler, or then se présenter. So, they will all the time require être, okay? And we will see in that video that, of course, the way to conjugate them will be a little bit different, okay? But then, of course, let's see one more time, avoir and être at the future form, because that's the first part you will have to use if you want to construct this future antérieur. And avoir at the future form goes like, j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. Okay, so one more time, j'aurai, remember, a and o together will produce this o sound, a and e, e, aurai, alright, then tu auras, final s not pronounced, aura, il aura, elle aura, okay, nous aurons, final s not pronounced, o and n together, nasal, on, a, u, o, Auront, all right, and then if you want to make this beautiful link, the little liaison between the two, it would be perfect. Nous aurons, okay. Here, same thing here. Vous aurez, all right. O and then a Z at the end will give you this a sound. Aurez, all right, and then this little link, this little liaison between the two. Vous aurez, okay. Then il auront, final T not pronounced, O and together, on, auront, okay, and then the link between the two, ils auront, elles auront, alright, so, j'aurai, tu auras, il aura, elle aura, 
nous aurons, vous aurez, ils auront, elles auront. All right? Then now for être. Je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. All right, so let's see it one more time. Keep in mind that when we've got a uh, like that, you really pronounce it uh, so serait, okay? I together, a eh, serait. Okay, the first S is quite strong. Uh, se, serait, all right? Then tu seras, final S not pronounced. Tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, so final S not pronounced, then O, N, on, serons. Vous serez, a Z together at the end, et serez, all right? Ils seront, final T not pronounced, and then you get this nasal, on, seront, elles seront. All right, so one more time. Je serai, tu seras, il sera, elle sera, nous serons, vous serez, ils seront, elles seront. All right? So, remember that the second part should be what we call this participe passé form. I've been making a big, big, big video concerning the par participe passé. So, if you really want to work on that, uh, it, is, it, it will be more um, uh, full of examples, okay? Uh, right now, here, in this video, I will only cover first here, as we've got... The first group, so regular, ending with a R, and it's quite easy because it will become E, like that, okay? So, parler, a R, will become parler, your participe passé form. Regarder, ending with a R here, regarder, a accent aigu, okay? And even this aller verb, so it doesn't belong to the first group, because it's quite tricky when you come to, to conjugate it. But even this one is quite easy for this participe passé form because it's a accent aigu like that. Okay? So all these verbs from the first group will become parler, regarder, aller. So like that for the participe passé form. Okay? Verbs from the second group. So ir, remember, not all the ER verbs uh, belong to the second group, so be, be careful. And so, examples like choisir, and it will become choisi, finir, fini, unir, uni. All right, so all these verbs will become like that, choisi, fini, uni. So this is the participe passé form, so the second part that you should put in your futur antérieur. Okay, so let's see now the third group. So it's a tricky, tricky group. So as I said, I've been making a video and uh, you, you've got more examples, but still. So main subcategories, if you want, in a way. So the one that will end with U. So like here and here. So connaître, connu. Connaître is to know. Voir, to see, vu. Okay, then ending with I. Partir, to leave, parti. Rire, to laugh, ri, then the one ending with i, t, écrire, to write, écrit, dire, to say, di, okay, and the one ending with i, s, mettre, to put, mi, and then prendre, to take, pri, all right. An example now with parler. J'aurais parlé, tu auras parlé. Il aura parlé, elle aura parlé, nous aurons parlé, vous aurez parlé, ils auront parlé, elles auront parlé. All right, so as we saw, first you've got this avoir at the future form, then you get your participe passé here, okay, aura, then participe passé, etc. So I wanted to put this a uh, accent aigu like that, just to show you that in a normal structure. So when you've got your subject and then your verb, okay, and if you conjugate it, it with avoir, so it will be exactly the same rule as we had for all the compost tenses in French. You don't need to put anything at the end of your participe passé form if the structure is simple like subject, 
and verb. All right? But if we conjugate it with être, like it is here the case with aller, aller is to go, remember, and it requires être. So what you can see it that it's that il sera allé here. You've got the masculine and singular form, so you will put this uh, accent aigu like that without anything. But if you've got here the feminine form, elle sera allée, you will have to add this mark of the feminine at the end of your participe passé form. Okay? You don't pronounce it, but still, you need to write it. Okay? So remember, a mark of the feminine singular. If you've got the plural, like it's the case here, ils seront allés et s, like that. So you'll put this s, you don't pronounce it, but still, you need to put it. Okay, elles seront allées. Here you've got the feminine form and it's the plural, so you've got this a uh, mark of the feminine, then you've got this s mark of the plural. Same thing here, you don't pronounce it, but you need to write it. Okay, so let's read them. Il sera allé, elle sera allée, ils seront allés, elles seront allées. All right. So let's see now how it go for the full thing. So, je serai allé. Okay, so I did put this a uh, like that just to make it possible to put the feminine. All right. Tu seras allé. Il sera allé. Elle sera allé. Nous serons allés. Vous serez allés. Ils seront allés. Elles seront allés. Okay, so one more time. Je serai allé. Tu seras allé. Il sera allé. Elle sera allé. Nous serons allés. Vous serez allés. Ils seront allés. Elles seront allés. And now we saw at the beginning of this video that all the reflexive verbs require as well être, okay, but then remember that the conjugation, it is a bit bit more tricky because you've got to use these m, t, etc. So let's see how they go when you put them at the futur antérieur, okay. So, je me serai présenté, tu te seras présenté, il se sera présenté, elle se sera présenté, nous nous serons présentés, vous vous serez présenté, Ils se seront présentés, elles se seront présentées. Okay? So you can see that as we conjugate these verbs with être, well, it will respect exactly the same rule. So we've got to put a uh, as the mark of the feminine when needed, s mark of the plural when needed. Here we've got nous, so it's the plural, vous as well. Okay? And then a uh, s like for here, elle, so feminine plural, so a uh, and S, A uh, for the feminine, S for the plural. Okay, so let's read them one more time. Je me serai présenté, tu te seras présenté, il se sera présenté, elle se sera présenté, nous nous serons présentés, vous vous serez présenté, ils se seront présentés, elles se seront présentées. So, keep in mind that... If you want to construct this future anterior, it should be first avoir at the future form, then your participe passé, and you will get a beautiful future anterior. In some cases, être au futur plus participe passé, and then you will get your future anterior. I hope it was clear. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, and then more material can be found at this address, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Les articles à la forme négative, because it can be tricky in some cases, and I have been, I have been students who have been asking me, are they transformed, do they stay the same if you put the sentence at the negative form, so that's what we'll see in this lesson, okay, so we'll see first the indéfini and the partitive, okay, so les indéfinis et les partitifs, all right, so indéfini, it would be translated as um, a 
in English, okay, and then the partitive some something, all right, and then we will work on les articles définis, so the in English, okay, so but then first, let's see indéfini et partitif, okay, so let's see the example for the article indéfini at the masculine form like un, for instance, and then let's see how it goes. Il a un chien. Okay, un chien, a dog, and here we've got the verb avoir, okay, il a un chien, so a dog, okay. So keep in mind that if you want to transform this sentence at the negative form, then il n'a pas de chien. So you can see that un here will become de here. All right, so that's the first thing that you've got to keep in mind if you want to use these articles, so article indéfini, and you want to put the sentence like in that case at the negative form, then un will become de. Okay, so let's see the example for the feminine form now. Une. Il y a, il y a, there is, remember, une manifestation, manifestation, demonstration, il y a une manifestation. So if we want to put this sentence at the negative form, il n'y a pas de manifestation. So you can see that this article une becomes de at the negative form. All right. So what about the plural now? Des, and then j'achète des lunettes. Je n'achète pas de lunettes, ok? Des lunettes, glasses, acheter, to buy. J'achète des lunettes. So you can see that it will be exactly the same rule, so des becomes de, ok? So what we've got here, un is becoming de, then une is becoming de, and after that you've got des, and it's becoming de as well, ok? And this is for what we call les articles indéfinis, so a uh, in English, okay? And then let's see now for the part, les partitifs, okay? So if you want to introduce this some, something, <laughs> concept, let's see now. Je bois du café. Boire is to drink, and then when you've got this du café, well, really it's some coffee. You don't specify the quantity, so it's really what we call Partitif, okay? Je bois du café. So this is the masculine form here, du. And if you look carefully, negative form, je ne bois pas de café. So you can see that du is becoming de at the negative form, all right? Second example, de la, okay? So it's for the feminine form. Elle prend Prendre is to take de la tarte. Tarte is pie. Some, okay, would be this de la. De la tarte. Negative form, elle ne prend pas de tarte. So you can see that this de la will become de at the negative form. All right? So what can we say if we've got un, une, or then de? So what we saw previously, so this indéfini, article indéfini, or then if we've got du, de l, or de la, as we saw previously, so what we call les partitifs, okay, if you want to put, well, them in a sentence, and the sentence it's, is at the negative form, then you will not use them, but instead you will use de, or the apostrophe, if you've got a word with a vowel after, or the sound of a vowel. Okay, that's really something quite important, and you should try to remember this rule because it is quite useful, especially because we use, we tend to use quite often, I mean, negative forms, I mean, it's not really, really rare, okay? So, it is one main rule that you should keep in mind. But, of course, in French, We've got exceptions, uh, and the exception is this structure or this uh, form that we've got, c'est, it is, or this is, okay? So when we use this c'est, we'll see a few examples now. Here, 
c'est un champion. OK? Un champion, a champion. So, c'est, this is, it is, un champion. OK? And if you want to, well, put the same sentence at the negative form, well, look, ce n'est pas un champion. So, you will keep your article as you had previously here. Un, un. It doesn't change. Feminine form. C'est une amie. OK? Negative form, ce n'est pas une amie. Feminine, it's exactly the same rule, so une will stay here. You don't modify it. And for the plural, ce sont des produits naturels. Okay. Produits, products, naturel, natural. Ce ne sont pas des produits naturels. Alright, so what can we say about that? Oh, sorry, we've got, yeah, we've got the, the, the partitive as well. So, du, so, same thing, c'est du chocolat noir, okay, chocolate, and then noir, it's black, so dark, if you want, c'est du chocolat noir, okay, négation, ce n'est pas du chocolat noir, okay, so here, we've got the partitive, and it's still the same here, du and du, okay, so, partitive féminin, c'est de la vanille, ce n'est pas de la vanille. So, de la is here, and it's still here for the negative form, okay? Vanille, vanilla. All right? So, now we can have the rule. So, when we've got un, une, and then des, so what we saw, les articles indéfinis, or then if we've got du, de le, or de la, okay? So, in that case, it's the partitive. Remember that if you use them with C at the negative form, they will stay exactly the same. Okay? So that's the main rule that you've got to keep in mind with these articles. So indefini or then with a the partitive. If you use them in normal structures, then they will change and they will become de or de apostrophe as we saw previously. But if you use these articles or then the partitive with C, in that case, they don't change when you put them at the negative form. Okay? So now we'll see the definite, so les, les articles définis. Okay? And so we've got for the masculine le, okay, so it's the equivalent as at uh, the in English, but then we've got the difference between the masculine, the feminine, and the plural. So le, have a look at this. Je prends le train, okay, prendre is to take, le train, the train, okay. Je ne prends pas le train, okay, so the article doesn't change at all. You just put it back, even if it's the, the negative form, it doesn't change, okay. So feminine. Elle aime la musique. Elle aime to like or to love. Okay. Elle aime la musique. The music. Elle n'aime pas la musique. It doesn't change at all. Les, plural form. Nous détestons les olives noires. Okay. Détester, to hate. Okay. Olives and then noir, black. Nous détestons les olives noires. Negative form. Nous ne détestons pas. Les olives noires, okay? In that case, it doesn't change. So you can see le doesn't change, la doesn't change, and le doesn't change either. All right, so the rule is quite simple. If you've got in your structures le, la, or le, and you want to have this structure at the negative form, then they will stay exactly the same. They won't change.